Starseed Mission Support. I noticed that my mic was crackling a little bit and I wasn't very pleasant, so I stopped the loop there. But I just want to welcome all the people that are tuning in live to Starseed Mission Support. I am Z, Earth Star Healer. If you're new to this stream or if you're listening at a future now moment, we have a really excellent show for you today. I'm just basking in this new energy that's coming in through these solar flares and I'm really excited to get into this new phase. If you're a star being, you might be feeling the waves of activation coming in like something real is happening. And so we're really excited to get into the DNA uh, schematics of what's happening right now and what's happening in the company of heaven as our unified consciousness is initiating this next phase of our journey and our mission on earth in support of the evolution and the um, ascension of this planet and of humanity and of this universe and so we're gonna dive into some pretty epic topics topics today and i just want to welcome all of the people that are here in the live stream we're gonna start by just anchoring the field with some sound frequencies and so we'll be getting started in just a few minutes here and uh, welcome to the space and I'm sending so much love out to our planetary star family. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So super high frequency energy consciousness and information is coming through today. So I just invite everybody to breathe into the heart, open the field, open our energy bodies. seed mission support welcome to the mothership and i'm feeling just such a immense level of grace and love coming through the energies has been this whole week the solar flares i think have a huge part in it i don't know for sure i'm not a, you know an earth technical scientist but it feels like it has something to do with it, it almost feels like i'm on this subtle wave of mushroom psychedelia and it feels like the heart is just radiating in this etheric field of presence and love and i'm so excited to be sharing this space with all of our beautiful planetary light warriors and agents of heaven um we have a lot to cover today and so i'm kind of gonna dive right in um hey to all the people tuning in and the live feed there i love you so much and i'm so excited that we get to be here together once again and so today we're talking about the 144,000 and there's been very many times in my awakening, you know, when I was first waking up, it was almost like I felt drawn to this number and to these words. I would see the number 144 all over the place and of course words like starseed, lightworker, indigo, crystal child, all of those terms are things that I resonated with, but you know, for a long time, there were these doubts and questions, you know, how could this be? And, you know, is there a difference between those things? Are we a unified field? Are we a unit? And um, if you're crying, I hope it's because you're feeling at home in this field. And these transmissions are really coming to you from our unified uh, starseed, um, mission control or the galactic administration or god <laughs> so we're gonna break down why those things are one and the same and there is a specific transmission that's in this field today of dna activation which also might be why we're starting slower you might feel that we sang for a little bit longer the song was very gentle the field is oscillating in this vibration that um, is very subtle and so we are going to communicate a little bit slower and a little bit differently. Um, but just kind of breathe, relax the body, relax the mind, expand the energy field and begin to tune in to 
the subtle energy and the subtle information that might be carried through the love waves in this field. And so obviously, if you are here, you're someone that resonates with the words crystal, starseed, lightworker, maybe even 144, 144,000. And yet, you know, I found that in my work awakening, there was not really a lot of complex information that would make me feel substantial and confirm <laughs> my feelings. And so I think the reason for this is that our journey on earth is one of exploration and is one of embodiment and is one of experience. And the experience of self-realization is really not a new concept, except in the new age and in this, you know, kind of false light deception um, fields, this idea has really been watered down and very many of the actual profound concepts have been removed. The things that actually brings us truly close to the source of our being. And so this is when we're talking about, you know, God or source or our collective highest divine unity or our collective destiny of heaven on earth, whatever it is that you want to call it. You know, these days I'm really liking to use this word God because I feel like I'm re- imprinting what the collective consciousness of humanity relates to or understands that as right there's been a war on holiness and a war on god for a very very long time on this planet and so obviously this word has also been hijacked in the collective consciousness many people who were fed um, religions through fallen patriarchal gods have their idea of what god is but to me God is the unified collective consciousness, the original field of living intelligence, and it carries these specific vibrations, things like holiness and sacredness and beauty, expansive love, co-creation, right, excitement, and all of these vibration is what we are um, embodying and we're transmitting in this field, and really this energy is what is activating our original DNA template. Because our original DNA template was, of course, designed in reflection to the original qualities of divinity or God, right? And so our story on earth is obviously not just beginning. And I find that this continuity is really um, something that is very much missing in our current New Age society. And while a lot of us have a feeling that maybe we were a Cathar or maybe we we're a, a Native American or maybe even we were a Taoist master, that we have, um, I find that what is a strong energy that's coming in right now is this energy of unification. Finding the uniting force behind not only the light workers and the star seas, but even the truthers, right? <laughs> even the people that woke up from disclosure, there are very specific beings that are meant to be awake at this time. And as you can see, there are many beings on the planet that are not awake at this time. And so really this energy is encouraging a deep sense of profound heart-based unity, which is finding the heart of purpose of all of these beings, even though there um, are seeded separations in our fields, you know, it's almost like there's judgment between these different sectors of the Great Awakening. What we're really wanting to do is find the unifying force, which is our love for humanity, our love for creation, our desire to help in the Great Awakening, which I think, you know, if you are a being that's awake right now, and you are aware of the different factions of the control systems, even if you're not, you know, super aware of the multidimensionality and the demons and all that stuff, if you're just aware that there is a control system on earth and that there are beings that are here to help, right? The reality of star seas and angels on earth. And if you feel that desire to help humanity, then you are probably one of these beings. And the reason why I say that is that it's really quite actually a scientific process. What's different between you and, you know, somebody that is awake and somebody that's completely asleep, it's actually, it comes down to, well, A, your soul's experience, where your soul just came from, the purpose of your soul. And of course, then a very important um, part of that is the body that you're walking into. And so all star seeds and light workers, you know, we chose very particular bloodlines and geometric DNA templates to come into and all star seeds 
all star seeds are and when i use the word star seed i just want to make sure you guys know that i'm referring to all beings that have this desire to love and be of service to humanity and are aware at this time that there is you know a system of control that is currently crumbling so if you are aware of those two things and that spark of desire to support humanity inside of you i'm going to refer to you as a star seed because the star in the word refers to star or cosmic consciousness of love divine love you are a spark of divine love so in this world this is a seed of star star energy and so whoo, just let the energy settle for a second is already quite intense in here welcome to the beings that are just tuning in here so we're talking about how come in that you're awake and, you know, other people aren't? Is it because really you're smart and other people are stupid? Is it because, you know, we want to just say, oh, there are those people are just stupid sheep, you know? Or is it because you actually have just a more complex or a more intact DNA template and you're actually blessed with that because of who you are and where your soul came from? And so this information is really coming through um, my higher self, which is now embodying into my physical body. And in the seventh dimension, I am an angelic geneticist. And in the higher dimensions, you know, there are other roles that we have played in this universe and in other universes. But basically, um, a higher dimensional geneticist views everything in geometries and the ability for consciousness and light to excrete and flow and take form through those geometries. Um, and so because of those skills i was called into the starseed mission to support um, basically most starseeds in the weaving of our starseed dna this is why i'm currently um, contracted to give you guys this information information that you maybe can't find through other people is because this is really high level information that requires a lot of practice and devotion to carry and I think that this is really important. All that is to break down some of the superficial spirituality that exists in the New Age community because we're really graduating from that level and into levels of mastery that our souls understand. And so when I'm speaking, I'm also communicating to your interdimensional levels that have skills and have knowledge and have understanding of creation. And those are the things that you are beginning to activate and awaken to inside of your body to be a gift to be God's gift to this world. And so what having a more advanced DNA template would mean that there are very many lineages that were seeded from the stars, even on the earth. That's why many of the Native American tribes and very many of the ancient ancestral knowledge, you know, they all talk about the ETs. And in fact, many of them have special ceremonies that contact ETs, right? ET contact is not really this new thing that we talk about in the disclosure world. And in fact, I find that the ceremonial component of contact is very often not really uh, talked about um, but this is how we have connected with our ancestors and with cosmic consciousness for you know as long as humanity have been um, uh, conscious <laughs> of being self-aware of being you know cave people connecting up into the stars and feeling like we were high on mushrooms and just being like wow I am a emanation of God and there's a profoundness that is experienced and felt in those experiences and so having this awareness that you have a more complex DNA template, which means that source consciousness flows through your light body and flows through your consciousness differently than how it flows through others who maybe don't have as clear access to these higher dimensional selves as you just arrived on this planet. And many have been trapped here for, you know, in the reincarnation machines for thousands and thousands of years. And so, of course, the reason why you have access to higher dimensional energy and you have a closer connection to source isn't because you're smarter or better than humanity in some way, but it's really because, you know, it's literally you signed up. It's your purpose to hold that field of awakening, to hold that field of resonance and lucidity for the collective. And so this really brings us out of our mind where we really have limited processing power and there's a lot of information out there to process right 
you know, the pandemic and the awakening and the cabal and all of these things. So many things for our mind to process. But really what was happening now is we're sinking down into our multidimensional heart that is actually, we're realizing the most important thing. And the thing that's been clouded from our vision, it's our connection and our embodiment of God inside of us, right? There's a lot of superficial um, communication or understanding about us being God. You know, there's like this intellectual, like, oh, we're all one and we're all God. But this is an experience, right? As we come into embodiment, as we activate our DNA, these experiences literally bring me to tears on a daily basis when I realize just how profound it is that I'm on the precipice of the evolutionary expansion of the universe and the healing and the liberation of a whole society, of the whole species that's on the precipice of fulfilling their collective destiny as a physical 3D vessel that is capable of experiencing it itself as God, right? And you've heard that in so many times. And the things that we're are making connections to is really calling forth your highest destiny. Maybe things that you have felt, like you've always felt like you're here to experience great things and magic. You feel like you can fly. You feel like you can walk through walls. You feel like you can bilocate and miraculously heal people. All of these things are potentials or capabilities of an intact DNA template. And this is what you are here to experience and this energy of feeling in union with source with God inside of our heart is the doorway is the initiation into that experience. And so what star seeds and indigos and light workers are, what are spiritual people? What is spirituality? To be connected to our spirit is to recognize that there is something that is a soul, right? You're somebody that already knows beyond the programming of this 3D matrix, which tries to tell you that there's nothing beyond the 3D. There's nothing before and after death. There's just what's here in the physical. And if you believe in energy, then you're crazy, right? That's the gaslighting narcissist society that is created to imprison humanity. But as a starseed or an indigo or a light worker or one of the 144,000 um, activated beings, you always knew that there was something beyond. You always had access to energy. You always knew that energy and magic and life beyond life or death existed and was real. But in order for us to open that, because that's really just the first realization, right? That's really just the beginning of the awakening process. And so going from that place to the next level is the complete recognition that there is actually something soulful and something profound about this process. And I say that this, these words are activation codes, right? Because when we tap into the feeling of reverence, reverence for creation, reverence for God, reverence for life, this is a portal into a way of life that we once remembered from the stars and in the temples and the ancients. And this is a vibration that many of us feel awkward or even afraid to embody because, you know, this is a vibration that has been um, persecuted and there's been murdered and have been rounded up and, and literally rounded up and killed for thousands of years. And so we've literally been trained to not trust that spark inside of our body and to not trust this word that is God and not trust that spark of God inside of us that actually unites us on a level that's beyond intellectual understanding. And that is the place that we're being called to. Right? Ooh. So we're gonna take a breath here. And my leg is numb. <laughs> okay. And so this transmission, it, it's, <laughs> these are words that really I didn't grow up with, right? Because I wasn't, I didn't grow up Christian. I didn't grow up in any religious order. I didn't grow up religious at all. I was connected to my ancestors because I was writing Taoist poetry when I was like four or five years old about the eternal changing quality of time and nerdy stuff like that. But, you know, these words are coming through an authentic place in my being because I'm 
really have devoted the past seven, eight years of my life to merging with this mystery, right? There was nothing else that mattered. And I was very lucky because obviously I was young. I didn't have any dependents. I could just live in my car if I, if I needed to. And whatever it is that called me in and pulled me closer to that feeling of union with divinity, union with our collective consciousness, I followed that. And you know, the, there's the sto these are the stories that I chronicled in my book, I Am Starseed. There's just been miracles and ETs and talking with ancient temples and all the things in the book, but it just illustrates how much devotion is actually required. It's not like you wake up, you buy some crystals, and all of a sudden, that's good enough. And at some point, it was good enough um, because that was the phase of the mission we were in. The phase of the mission we were in was uplifting the frequency of the planet, and many of us, we could just work from our light body. That's why we could go to our matrix job and not really be present with the force of God inside of our being, and we could still do our work. And for many, many years, many, many decades, that was good. Now, we are about to move into a next level of our mission in which this vibration of divinity is really starting to flow through our body into the world which is really what our job is you think about you know i think the greatest role model we have um would be you know jesus jesus was an et right it's so funny because sometimes i get these um jesus lovers commenting on my videos they're like this is all demonic you know the new age is blah 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 like go find jesus and it's so funny when i see that because if they really listen to my videos they would know that these vibrations are exactly what jesus is bring have brought through and in fact, Jesus was also a star seed, which is why we feel close to him, like he's our big brother, right? Jesus was a high Syrian angelic um, being, just like many of you are. And I believe when he said, you're going to do greater things than me, he was talking to the light workers and the star seeds in the future because he really exemplified what a activated template looks like, a template that every single person tuning into this live right now has. Right. In order for a star seated being to incarnate, we all chose DNA templates that were intact. And in fact, we could weave in these higher dimensional strands of DNA that every single star seed has access to. And so this is why, you know, many of you stayed awake and many of you could see right through the lies, whereas a lot of people couldn't because their DNA had degenerated over time of being stuck in this 3D matrix. And so we think about this 12D avatar um, DNA template. And, you know, I know that, you know, I said that there's 144,000 primary nadies or energy lines that are directly connected to source into the physicality and woven into the light body. And some people were being smart, Alex, and they were like, well, there's so much more. When it's like, well, you know, you have primary chakras and you say you have your three primary dantians and you have your seven primary chakras inside but you also have thousands of smaller chakras you know i could just say like yo there's you know so many more but we're what we're referring to are these primary um, lines of energy that go into this these different dimensions that go all the way up into 15d and beyond into the sound field and so there is a mathematics there is a physics there is a structure of the universe that many star civilizations understand many of you are going to resonate with this information this is the stuff that we're going to be teaching in the advanced level of our school the earth star academy but you know i've really worked hard on developing a beginner class because um part of this is intellectual and part of this is very physical and experiential and without having worked through the childhood trauma and clearing out the implants and all of these things, it's actually impossible vibrationally to articulate and access and activate all of these higher strands of energy. And so it's actually, you know, it doesn't really help if I just tell you, you know, the 12th grade or college level physics if we haven't learned third grade math. And so we really want to stay simple um, here in this live stream, but just know that this information is here and it, we're meant to radiate and we're meant to um, emit a signal that is awakening the angelics and the star seas on our earth onto the next level of our mission and our awakening. 
And so I'm going to go back to this whole Jesus um, template for a second. What was Jesus doing, right? He was going from town to town and because he was so united with God, he knew that he was in oneness with source. He knew that he represented source. And this is every single person in this room, right? You are here as a representation of source unity, as a gift, as a spark of divine love. It's out of God's love that you're here. If God didn't love humanity, if God didn't love this planet, then you know none of us would be here, right? If you didn't love humanity, and it's one it was one and the same, we are one, and in you, you we're united, we're in oneness with Source. And so, if you didn't love humanity, and if you didn't love the Earth, you would not have chosen to be here either. And so, when we begin to fully accept that this this is our destiny. There's a power that comes in. And this past couple of weeks, I've really been working through this fear because you, you know, those of you that have um, watched these live streams with me for a while, you might be feeling that my transmission and my energy is maturing. And part of this is because I used to kind of hide inside of the star seed. You know, I just talked about chakras. I might not even talk about the false matrix. But this energy of embedded holiness was something that I was afraid to fully embody because of the persecution, because I didn't want people to misunderstand me, because I didn't want the judgment. And all of those fears are being pushed out of my field because the earth and humanity and source are calling us to step into a greater level of planetary responsibility, right? We can think that we have power to change the world, but if we don't take every step with in every stride of our being, in alignment with that belief, there's a break between what we believe and what we think and what we experience in real life, right? If we believe that we're an infinite, strong creator and we're here to bring heaven on earth, but now if in our real life, we're afraid of the cabal and we're afraid of you know the vaccines and we're afraid of what people are gonna think if we told them the truth or if we told them the truth, but love was not embedded in our message, then really this embodiment, you know, it's not to say that we're not doing our job right. It just means that there's growth and there's places that we can heal and continue to move towards the fulfillment of our destiny. Whew. And so just drop me a comment if you're feeling the vibrations of activation in our transmission today. And we're going to get into talking about the Armageddon software because this is a timeline um, conjunction that we're in. We're feeling these timeline technologies that have been activated in mass society that are literally creating, um, you know, this sense of doom. You all know it, the doom and gloom, where the dark side is really trying to create these timelines where they have succeeded in their agenda of planetary control, right? And the, the idea that we fear that, that we think that it's even a possibility then you know the mind control is working, right? If there's an ounce of you that even thinks that there's a possibility of that coming true, that's the mind control working. And again, we're not criticizing, we're just bring our awareness to that place because what happens when we bring conscious awareness to places is that the neural network grows to that place and we can adjust in real time our presence and our beliefs. And so... Ooh. Okay, I'm just going to hang on a moment here. Oh, okay. I want to just really seriously um, invite you guys to join me for the Pleiades Gateway. It's really awkward for me to market things because um, I obviously you guys know i share all of this information very freely and i give you guys my best every week and so you know trying to sell tickets and stuff is something that really is not um in my comfort zone but the reason why this sacred space is needing to be held and needing to be um contained is because this is a 3d contact experience a three-day contact experience what that means is that the galactics has a plan and has an activation that they want to impart and it requires for three days of deep focus for us to actually move through the process and the reason why this is important is because many star seeds 
I mean, you guys are literally asking me for sessions all the time. And the truth of the matter is, is that it's actually way more powerful to be doing healing inside a group field with the Galactics for three days versus just two hours with the team because you're inside the field, you're saturating. And many of these clearings that are coming through right now, um, I'm finding that, you know, it's really the similar stuff in all light workers. Things like the J seals, which I'm going to go into in another video. Various negative um, alien um, factions have installed these seals into the planetary grid inside of our DNA and inside of our light bodies that literally keep us from accessing various dimensionalities. And so if you've been on the awakening path for a while and you're like, I don't really know why. Um, I'm just not making progress or I'm just not feeling energy or I feel my higher self sometimes, but that energy is not anchoring in my body. It's because these seals, unless you remove them, they're still there. And then you need to learn how to remove them on a regular basis. I personally run the clearing frequency every day because the seals are in the planet's body. And so if you remove them once in the unified field, they're going to start to re-imprint again. And what we need is actually... You know, people talk about critical mass a lot, and I think people misunderstand what is actually necessary when we talk about critical mass. It's not about, you know, 10% or 1% of people that are awake. It's about people that have their light body that are actually online, meaning they're accreting or excreting, um, oh, sorry, accreting, accretion. They're emitting potent light frequencies, meaning their DNA is sparking, Right? And so this allows a high level of source energy to actually flow through the body. And so when this is only possible once we have cleared certain layers of our field, and it's just really hard for me to obviously clear one person at a time or teach you guys how to do it because it's taken me seven years and the galactics really want to support in this process. And so the first two days of this is clearing through all of that. And then the third day is actually bringing in higher self walk-in um, soul fragments into the body, which is really incredible. This is something that is possible. Um, if you want to check out this client session I did last week, it's the last video on my YouTube channel. It's called OMR number four, um, age regression, astral travel and star family or something. This is a session that um, I did with Maggie during the Earth, Star, um, Earth, Sun, and Andromeda connection. And her session was at the peak of this alignment. And you can really feel what happens during these alignments because she literally went back to visit her star family. She had an experience of connecting with her guides. And they brought in, you know, she had a soul piece that came in. This is what's, hap what's possible and what... The galactics are intending for all starseeds that, you know, recognize this frequency of activation and are willing to commit to a training, a three-day process of walking a higher self aspect into the body. And of course, this is obviously a lot of focus and work on my end. It's taken me literally seven years <laughs> of daily um, training to be able to hold this level of energy. So I... I mean, I have a hard time communicating and, and talking about how amazing this is because I don't want to sound like I'm trying to sell it to you, but it is something that, you know, people have tremendous experience with. And I'm really just trying to express to you how incredible it is when we're in a field and you feel the presence of the high angelic Pleiadians, the presence of the masters, the true masters, you know, not the fake ones, the true masters that carry these uh, virtues in their heart, things like cultivating patience, cultivating presence, cultivating embodiment, the things that would take decades in a temple of cultivating. And these are the energies that we're actually interested in, right? I'm not going to... Um, at this point, I know what is required for our community and where our souls are calling us to go. Every single person in this field that resonates with these frequencies of true soul mastery, you are here to experience something amazing in this lifetime, something that requires for us to work hard, right? Something that's activating 
um, a sense that some things are worth fighting for, some things are worth working really hard for, and reconnecting our being to the dignity and the beauty of our connection with God is something that's worthwhile, especially if you're here to help humanity, because we're here to help humanity reconnect with that love and with that dignity of the soul. And without having embodied it in our own body, we can't reflect that at people, right? We can't reflect that. We can hold that space for humanity. And of course, the New Age is consistently trying to water this down, keep you from accessing the true signal of divinity embodied. And one such example of this is literally the Armageddon software, which much of this is in the frequency fence and in the technologies and in the 5G and in the underground bases that are literally radiating. They're literally frying this energy. And it's, of course, it's coming through the radio, it's coming through the news, it's coming through the TV. It's something that is trying to make humans believe that there is something catastrophic going on that we need to be afraid of. And so this planetary mind control technology is literally aggressively attacking. It's been this assault on humanity, you, you know, for the last two years through the you know what. That, whoo, this thing is really trying to trick humanity into believing that there's a possibility of a planetary control system and that um, yeah, there's going to be like a Nazi-like regime and that you have to do these things and all of this to the point where it's leaking into the New Age community, right? People are afraid. People are, even the truthers in, in disclosure, they're trying to disclose this energy without the integrated power of God. I'm not going to run away from the scary things that's happening on this planet. In fact, I come face to face with it every single day. When I'm in my sessions, and I'm in people's light bodies, and I literally watch the interdimensional loosh machines creating misery in people. Because think about it. What does a soul spark feel like? Right? If you've ever been inside of a quantum hypnosis session, you know that that higher self soul energy is so brilliant and beautiful and you feel like this infinite expansion and possibility and joy. You feel the creativity of the universe and the possibilities and just the fabric of love. This is the fabric of our spirit. This is what is real. And yet when you look around in the world, how many people wake up in the morning and they're like, ah, another beautiful day in heaven, right? It's like we've accepted mundanity and misery and depression and anxiety. I mean, give me a comment. Let me know how many of you sometimes just feel anxiety or feel depression. I mean, even I feel that way sometimes. And I've been doing this clearing work. I'm very vigilant with my field. And yet even still, I can feel that there is imprints and parts of my energy body that is being is like every time that I feel disconnected from myself and that joy. Every time I feel just the slight anxiety and fear, I know that this is something that is being siphoned off. And when I do sessions with people, I, I see these systems in their light bodies. And when I remove them, people feel relief. And they're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is actually how I feel. This relief and lightness and joy without the pressure of these, you know, technologies that are siphoning loosh. And this is not a new concept. We've known about loosh. Except we just think that it only exists in the kidnapped children or in the trafficking and in the ritual abuse. It's planetary. This planet was captured as a loosh farm. That is why most people exist in a state of anxiety and separation and misery because that energy is being siphoned. That's why most people don't wake up and have the sovereignty of their creative energy. You know, how many people in this world is waking up and all right, what do I want to do today? What do I want to bring into the world? How do I want to love and bring creation in forth through me today? Most people are not. Most people are not living in the state of having control over their time and energy. And so when people don't have access to their own time and energy, what is that? A slavery system. And what is the source of that enslavement? It's not the cabal is not the government, is interdimensional demonic consciousness. And we can go into that in a whole other video. There's a whole, 
whole thing. I mean, this is really why I've created my school because it's going to take me 100 hours to explain all of this and, you know, the processes of activation. But whoo, basically, we're recognizing that we need to eradicate that system from our body. Right? And I know that it could feel like it's hard if you're out there working. And I just want you to know that you have so much help and you have so much support. And all we have to do is feel worthy that we get to tap into the presence of God in every now moment and allow that field, allow that energy to take over, to fill our being, to give us the solutions. And, I, you know, again, this is not a separate entity. God is not some separate entity up there answering your prayers. God is your higher self right? God is this expanded, unified part of us. And actually, we are a part of the answered prayers, right? The enslavement and even these demons that exist in this state of misery, they don't know how to get out of it. And so God has answered the prayers of the people by sending angels of heaven to this planet. And that is every single one of you and every one of you deserve to wake up feeling the dignity of that, feeling the empowerment of that, feeling the joy and the relief that that amount of power is what's coursing through your being to fulfill your mission. And if you don't feel like that all the time, it's okay. There are processes, there are tools, there are techniques, there is support. We are here for you. And so the false matrix has turned up the all-time high, emitting signals of doom and fear and control and segregation. And of course, all of this is to try to make humanity believe that there's a possibility of the success of the neg negative agenda. So let's dissect that for a moment, okay? Because even me, I had fears, right? I didn't know I had these fears because consciously in my soul, I'm not afraid of the cabal and I'm not afraid of the false matrix and I'm not afraid of the vaccines. I'm not afraid of the mandates, but there's another part, a human part of me that was afraid that I didn't even know about. <laughs> and I just came into awareness of it early this week. And I came in because I knew that I was going to have to emit this signal towards you guys. And that I was going to have to process this fear myself first, right? Because, and I have a special announcement that I'm going to make next week. Stay tuned. Next week's transmission is going to be really exciting. But for now, I'm just going to say that I literally almost had a panic attack, okay? Source showed me something about my future that I was super scared of. And my guides came in and they told me, where there is God, there is no fear. And I'm just going to allow that truth to percolate for a minute. Okay, because again, we're transforming this idea that again, God is some unified entity, right? This is our force of our unified creation consciousness, the universal intelligence. We're not just talking about some bearded man in the sky. We're talking about universal, unified creation intelligence. That's what we're talking about here. And so... What is the fabric of that? Love, perfection, unity, creation, devotion. These are the words that help us connect into the feeling of holiness. Why is it that when we walk into a temple, we feel that pristine beauty? It's because beings there have anchored the presence of this vibration. And in fact, all of the earth and all of people are meant to exist in this connection. The whole planet is meant to exist. I mean, what does heaven on earth feel like? What is heaven on earth? What is new earth? New earth is this planet that has reached its full potential and the fulfillment of its potential. And that means the presence of divinity, the presence of multidimensional unity is present embodied, experienced in all the avatars, aka human beings. And so if that's the new earth that we're creating, we need to embody these vibrations in our body, right? As we experience and embody those vibrations in our body, that's when that love can overflow and just hurricane into this world. 
And so this idea that where there is God, there's no fear, speaks to your connection and the presence of that holiness, that feeling of connection with divinity in your being, in your, in your cells, in your soul. And when we start to work with this, this is really a shortcut, right? Because when we realize that anytime we're in fear, in anxiety, in doubt, in question, we recognize that that's not the totality of us. We're, we don't have to identify with that part of us that's scared. We can be loving. We can be receptive. We can be there to hear everything that they have to say. And we can choose to say, all right, well, are you ready to be reconnected to the presence of our true self, which is the truth of our unified divinity, right? And when we then actively, this is really something that I've, I've been training, like the masters are Jedi training me. They do not let me swirl in victimhood for one minute. As soon as I'm like, oh, I'm scared. They're like, okay, now how are you going to react to it? What's your next move? My next move is to surrender and recognize and assume the power of creation. Why is this important? Because when we spin into fear, when we believe that there is a timeline of planetary control and absolute craziness and World War III and all those things, we're, we're, A, we're believing that our unified, beloved creation sent all of us down here to die a terrible death. <laughs> and at this point in time, I mean, that might have happened in the past, right? It's definitely happened in the past. But this lifetime, I mean, drop me a comment or hit the like button if you feel deeply that this lifetime we're going to succeed in our mission because all of creation is in support of the completion of this universe. We've moved into the photon belt. There's cosmic light and intelligence coming to the planet. So many ancient civilizations have left light technologies for us to work with and activate in this now. Why is this time so important? It's because there is just, we're supported by universal cycles, basically. Right? And so when we fall into the fear, we're basically saying, well, the cabal is more powerful than God. Or these demons are more powerful than God. Or <laughs> these fears and hum humanity that are asleep are more powerful than us are more powerful than the 12D, sometimes 48-stranded God incarnate avatar star seeds that has come here to usher in God's fulfillment, God's timeline, God's intention, God's dream for this world. And now if I say it like that, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? <laughs> to say that, well, demons are more you know, we're scared because demons are more powerful than God. There is no force that's more powerful than ourself or our unified creation. And what we're intending at this time, which all of us can feel, is the prophecy of a united humanity, the prophecy of heaven on earth. And so we are at this crossroads here there is a timeline conjunction happening you can feel it in these different places in the world when they're testing out this these different mandates and stuff right you're not allowed to do this you can't travel people are saying oh no people are going to die because of this because of you know whatever and what this is reflecting into my being is well am i really exerting the maximum power of creation as i can Am I really living the highest potential of my life force in alignment with source and the co-creation of heaven on earth? And, you know, I spend a lot of time working. I work a lot. I'm very efficient. I'm very productive. And even then, you know, I'm like writing five books at a time, making these videos, running a school, creating a new school, downloading courses. You know, I do this and I still have time to do my self-work and all these things. And... When I really tune into it, I realized that there was more that I can do. I realized that there was a whole other level of being present, being seen, being out there and shining the light. And I realized there was a whole sector of light work that I was hiding from because I didn't want humanity to see me. I didn't want humanity to think that 
I was weird or think that I was a weirdo. I was afraid of the power of God inside of my heart. And so I could not go out there and tell humanity that God loved them because I hadn't fully remembered that myself. And so we're really coming into a very simple, you know, there's, it's simple and complex, right? Because, you know, the simplicity of it is that humanity has been severed from source, severed from divinity. And we have existed in a system that has castrated us from that dignity, from that sacredness, from that holy existence. And we can go into the complexities of how that's affected our inner children, our astral bodies, our multidimensional DNA template, and how we can use astral travel and shamanic healing techniques to heal those things. Yes, we're going to break down all of those things in our school. And none of it matters if we're not putting this feeling in the forefront of our life and allowing that to break down our fears, take us to the edge of our comfort zone and beyond because we know what our purpose is. And even if you don't know exactly what your purpose is, I mean, when I first woke up, I didn't know that I was going to end up creating school and talking to you guys and teaching you guys about galactic shamanism. I had no idea. All I knew was that I had a purpose and it had to do with my love for humanity. That's what woke me up. I saw how miserable people were and it broke my heart. I knew that there was a different way. I knew that life was not created to be miserable. And so it broke my heart to see my human brothers and sisters in this amnesia disconnected from this force that loves ourselves so much. And so I decided that I would devote my life, whatever it, what, whatever it is that is being asked of me. And people say, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I say, you always know what you're supposed to do. It's just that sometimes it's hard. It's uncomfortable. You know, it might require effort. And so it's easier to say, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do than to actually do the difficult things that's going to bring you into your embodiment. and your true timeline of being on your purpose and your mission, right? Everybody has a higher self. Everybody has access to your higher self. Sometimes it's easier to pretend like we don't know. <laughs> and so we talk about this full DNA activation of the 144,000, okay? This energy of unification keeps coming in, keeps coming in. Unification. What are we unifying? It is the star seas, the light workers, the indigos, 144,000, the angels, the truthers, the awakening, everyone that might resonate with a different word, but at the source of it, we are an emanation of God's love that's here to redeem humanity, that's here to support the evolution of the universe. We are unified in that purpose. This is our purpose. For every single person, we are unified in this prayer that's answered through us. Whew. And so we talk about then, you know, full DNA activation. We're not talking about this, these sparkly things that feel good, you know, or feeling like we're on mushrooms. These are the entry point, right? What we're talking about here is, remember, Jesus said, you will do even greater things than me. And again, I believe that we're a unified, you know, a lot of people say the Christ force. We'll talk about the Christos realignment mission. This has been a cross time space mission of many of the guardian families in the universe that Jesus was a commander and was a leader in. But I believe that that lifetime 2,000 years ago was actually a recon mission for us to really understand just how bad things were. And then we were like, oh, shit, they're killing us, man. Like, it's really bad. And so we went back up there and we made the necessary light technologies. We created the necessary teams and the DNA strands and positioned millions of angels. We're like, this is what's, what it is going to take. And so what was Jesus showing us even back then was what an activated 12D template looks like. 
And that's why he said, you shall do greater things than me, because he knew that, you know, at this point, 2,000 years later, we were going to be in a different place in the ga galaxy. We're going to have more photonic light. You know, civilization is much more civilized. <laughs> and there's just so many more of us were able to incarnate on this planet. So what that means is that we can literally embody a greater DNA template than even Jesus was able to because he was able to embody a 12D avatar consciousness activated DNA template. And we saw the things that he was able to do. People touched them and they were instantaneously healed. He walked through the town and people could feel the presence of God. Right? But there are even powers beyond that. Maybe walking through stargates, right? Dislocating and bilocating into a different galaxy. And these are also things that are documented in, you know, stories like Hathor or these other ascended masters that we hear stories of or even not stories of. Whew. And so what does that say about us and the work that we have to do here? We're really just, I feel like I'm taking a sledgehammer. I'm just like, all right, new age glass ceiling, like, <laughs> right? This is a vibration that we've been feeling and we've been needing. When I started tapping into the true vibrations of divine union and the true potential of my DNA, I was like, oh my God, of course. This is so, of course, this makes sense. Like, why is nobody talking about this in the New Age community? Why are we not talking about the path of true Ascended Mastery? Because the fake Ascended Masters that we're seeing, you know, they stand in the corner and they're like, Dear ones, we have won. All is good. Just sit on your ass. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, anywho... <laughs> I'm just deeply honored. i um, been getting a lot of intel from the Guardians about Earth Star Academy kind of being the space where this information is being transmitted. And many of you resonate with me because you remember me from upstairs and we actually have a soul contract for me to hold space for your activation. And what this means is that, you know, we've already gone through this training in other places in the Pleiades, which is again, why the Pleiades gateway is gonna be so massive. Um, cause I don't really have words, you know, think about spending three days in this field, getting guidance, realigning our light body and just really be able to get in and do the deep work. Okay. It's magical. I have no words to describe what it is because there's not out there. There's no event like this. And so I feel deeply honored and I feel like all the work that I've put in have really, um, obviously is paying off and it's so worth it. Like if I hadn't, devoted my life to this. I mean, there's so many people out there that are offering classes and stuff. But, you know, you got to really check into their credentials, okay? And this is not to say, you know, their 3D credentials, like where they went to university, but, you know, check in with their soul lineage. This is information that you can get from your guys and your heart. Check in with their soul lineage. Check in with their credentials through their lifetimes and what roles they have played in the galaxies with the guardians and really what their physical human self have gone through in an integration. Because for the most part, you know, I understand that is a responsibility for you guys to trust in the information that I have to share with you. And I don't take that responsibility lightly. And in fact, it really irks me when I see people that have not done the healing, have not done the clearing, have not done the purges, have not done the integration work, and they're channeling and telling you that they have information from the galactics. When really is another mind control frequency. And so I hope that you guys can, through these transmissions, begin to discern the difference. Okay? Because... The messages from heaven right now that are coming through are about your activation, about supporting you into the next phase of your purpose. Imagine walking through the grocery store and people are instantaneously healed and they're reconnecting to source and they're crying because you know how sometimes you guys cry in the songs? Why do you cry? Because you feel connected. You feel like you're back in at home. And once the soul is disconnected from source and it finds itself back again, it's 
a joyful and it's a profound experience. And that is what we're bringing to the earth. Not judgment, not division, not saying, oh, we're just going to leave the humans or they're going to get picked up by a, they can get picked up by a light ship and they'll fly to another planet because they don't deserve to ascend or whatever. It's ridiculous. <laughs> right? And I know that some of you guys are saying, you know, people think you're nuts. Ooh, but it's about integration and source is never going to ask you to put yourself out there unless you are ready and you shouldn't push yourself to put yourself out there either. In fact, really, I feel like I'm just starting to speak, right? Speak the things that really matter and how many thousands of hours I've had to put in rolling around the floor trying to get, you know, these implants out of me and, you know, Having things try to literally kill me when I was in high school, I get it. We've all been through that. Ooh, and so we are here to radiate the profoundness of God's love. Starseeds are a spark of God's love. We're here because we as a unified divine creation love creation we love ourselves right we give birth and we create these worlds and they're magnificent and we love it and so that's how we feel about humans that's how we should feel about humanity when we see that humanity are being assaulted by these mind control technologies and they're trying to turn us against them we should get livid Right? And we should speak and we should allow that power and that anger to alchemize and transform inside of our being. Allow that fire of transformation and alchemy to burn away the fears and to bring us into the presence that where there is God, there is no fear. And where I am is the presence of God. And what does this require? You know, is it just going to spontaneously happen? Do you think that your higher self is going to spontaneously walk into your body? Sometimes it happens. And then the danger is that people think just because it happened once that they're integrated. And, you know, again, the reasons why the G's, <laughs> the G's have designed this class to focus for the first two days on the earth self is because your soul doesn't need my help. <laughs> Right? Your soul is an ascended master, is a galactic super being, is an avatar. And your soul does not need me to help it grow or be closer to God in any way. What the G's are wanting to support are your human selves that feel stuck, that feel lost, that feel fragmented, that need the tools. That need the tools and the support, the field support to connect with those higher part of you. And again, we're going to be clearing out things, starseed tags, astral abduction experiences. Um, whoo, ET meddling and the all the weird stuff, you know, the DNA harvesting. If you're getting that weird tense feeling in your belly, you know, we can help you with that. Right? Whoo, and we're here to support you and you can do it yourself. If you're really somebody that you know, don't want to invest in an experience that brings you, you know, something that really helps you, you can just watch my free videos on my YouTube account and get all the information you need. I promise there's a self healing videos, there's a psychic attack videos. In it, I really give you all the information that you need for free to do this work yourself. I do. But me firsthand, I know how I mean, I had a shaman one time and he would say some seas only require a little drop of water, meaning he only needed to give me a little bit of support for me to just blossom into this magnificent tree. And that's really what me and the G's are here to do. We want to support next week. I'll um, break down the, the curriculum because it's qu quite multifaceted. And again, there's nothing out there like it. So it's kind of hard for me to you know, tell you, it's like, at least if I'm selling bananas, I can just be like, hey, I have bananas. Do you want to buy a banana? But 
in this case, I kind of have to break it down, and so I will. And then the week after, we're going to be doing a full-length oracle healing ceremony. So you can experience what it feels like to be inside of a oracle medicine space for about an hour and a half. And then you're going to be able to imagine what that's going to feel like for three whole days. Okay? Okay, so now I just want to talk about the timeline anchoring real quick. Whoo, the energy is just kind of crazy, it's crazy party. <laughs> yeah, and you know, this integration is like when there's presence of joy and the presence of God is light, right? It's full of love, it's full of delight because we can talk about interdimensional planetary human civilization enslavement and rape we can because we know that there's the presence of our highest power to come in and help us heal those things Whew. so in order for us to override the mind control technology we have to learn how to rise above it right and how we rise above it is by continually jedi training ourselves to First of all, become aware of how we're emitting our consciousness, how we're exerting our consciousness, how we're existing. Are we subconsciously afraid? Are we walking? Like, do you fully believe that heaven on earth is here? Do you walk and breathe every single now second of your life with the integrated belief that that's the timeline we're on? Or is there still a little bit of fear like, oh, what's going to happen? Or, you know, are they going to, you know, are the Nazis going to come and take over? Or, you know, the, the longer we let those little energy leaks exist, the longer this circus is going to keep happening in the external world. Because when we get certain and when we grow a spine and we put our foot down, <laughs> then no, we're here to anchor God's timeline of heaven on earth. And then what happens is that we start to anchor this in a grounded way where, and this takes mastery, it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, do you guys feel like when, you know, I lost my baby last year that it was easy for me to be like, all right, what's the highest timeline? You know, what did this happen? It took all of my being to surrender and to find the gift. And it took a long time, right? And this is all teaching me that devotion is real that depth and soul and the things that are so deep that it makes us cry those things are real and so there's a profound level of devotion that goes into when you choose to step fully into your purpose and you guys know that i don't really you know i i, I give you the shortcut when there is one like you know, you're God, that's the shortcut. But even then, you need to put effort into restructuring and rewiring every single time that a fear comes up. Every time, you know, for example, scarcity, that's the biggest one. It's like, oh no, am I going to have money? And you know, you feel this restriction start to happen. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. And then what happens? You can feel that the gate of life in your root chakra, which is what allows life force energy into the body, that's why orgasm is and sexual energy creates new life. That's what nourishes the body, brings life force. What is life force? It's energy. That is what abundance is. Okay? So when you're in the scarcity mindset, now why do you think it's a part of the collective mind control to make everybody be afraid of scarcity? It's because then everybody's root chakras close down. They don't access their own life force energy. And then what's happening? That energy being is being siphoned and hijacked and stolen. That's the collective loose machine, right? And so as a warrior of heart light, of divine love, one of the... who requirements is for us to become our own masters right become our own divine parents where we're gaining this extra awareness we're perceiving everything that we're doing with love it's not like we're like oh no i'm in scarcity again i'm so bad you know i'm never gonna get this it's oh look we're running scarcity again how do we want to respond to that or oh look i'm in scarcity and 
I'm so happy that I noticed that, right? Just even the idea of noticing is a step forward towards responding correctly. And so now we're retraining our energy system to respond to fear. And so what is the optimal way to respond to fear? Oh no, I don't have enough. You feel that constriction? Give me a comment or, or um, in, the, in the live chat. If you feel that restriction in your root, in the females, it'll be in the vaginal canal and in the cervix area. In the males, it'll be in the perineum. If you feel this anxiety and this tightness, you might want to do a little Kegel right out and see how much space there is in the relaxation. <sighs> and so soon as that fear, that restriction, that confining energy, oh no, I'm so scared. I don't have enough. Oh, I noticed that I'm in fear. Okay, let's get excited. What can I do to bring love into the world today? What can I do to create something new that is meaningful? And do you feel when you move into that energy of creation, how the womb starts to open and the life force begins to flow, right? And this is when higher dimensional solutions can come in, where before our brain was like, the only way we can make money is work. And so if I lose my job, then I'm going to die. This is the false matrix template or the mind control blueprint, right? And then we realize that the truth is that what's valuable, like what's money? Money is value. And what is valuable? It's what, what do humans need? What does the planet need is love, right? And then there's going to be these programs in our, our mind that believe that we can't sustain ourselves with love, that we can only sustain ourselves with misery. Again, another mind control program in the root chakra. And again, we're going to be diving through all these layers of the programming in the root chakra so you can really begin to operate Jedi training. I am of responding. And this really came in when I was pregnant with Kara because I was scared all the time. And every time I was scared, she would come in and immediately Jedi cut that off. <laughs> yeah. Who and that's how we create the new earth anyway. Right? It's not easy to break out of mind control. It's taking me a full eight years of devotion. And it's going to be a lot easier for every single one of you because it's just not going to take as long with these systems and with all of this information, right? That's why um, you guys nominated me to go through that experience. I know that many of you nominated me upstairs to go through this experience so that I can make your lives and your mission so much easier. That's why you resonate with my work. And so there's actually a connection our unified family connection you feel like we're i'm your sister that you because when you're a family you know not everybody does the same job sometimes you have to send out a scout and so you guys sent me out there i devoted my life to fulfilling this because i wasn't going to let you down and so now we have all this information for us to really parcel through the false matrix so that we can fully embody and operate right? Operate in a new way. And this can take as long or as little as you decide, right? It's like, are you going to continue to allow yourself to be run by fear? Or are you going to just make an effort to stop yourself in its tracks every single time that it happens and be patient until you fully reprogram? You just have to be patient too. Thousands of years of programming, right? And exactly, exactly. Because when, when there is excitement, there is abundance because there is a life force. And so this is how we um, ah, learn to rise above the mind control and do this in a grounded way through positive creational action. And this starts inside of your body, right? People don't know, but the way that you create it's really important because literally the process of you creating is not even about the final product of what you're creating. It's just about, it's even about just the process of you creating. And this is something that Kara is like, she's kind of my master teacher in this, right? That 
the process of you creating and moving your body, it's interacting with the fabric of creation. Your consciousness and your energy is consistently feedbacking and creating the creation. So if you exist and you create from fear, you're going to create a world of scarcity and fear, which is what humanity has been tricked into doing. So what we're doing, what we're stepping into is a new level of mastery where we're literally, where we're literally learning to master our dance through the creation to not only create the new earth, but create it in the original template of love and joy and pleasure and excitement. And so, of course, that requires really deep inner work that can take many years. And we're really just here to support. This is what the Pleiades Gateway is about this time. The Gs are saying it's about supporting the earth self and for the galactic self to walk into the body. And this can only happen if the earth self is clear. And that's why sometimes it's tricky because people are like, I walked in, I had a walk-in experience back in whatever year and now, and it's like, okay, well, are you, are you operating as your higher self now? And it's like, no, okay, so what happened there? Like you can't, so right, you can't take um, credit for things that haven't fully happened and the way that for those things that fully happen is through intense levels of deep work which is worth it humanity is worth it you are worth it you are worthy of existing in a field of holiness and divine love and revelation every single day and there's processes for us to get there through these complex deprogramming of mind control. And as we do that, we remember our original mastery of creation. Ah, and we start to create the solutions, create the new earth. That's what we're here to do. It's like, why aren't we doing that? Because we need to excavate these programs from, from our being. And so this is true source embodiment. How would God walk through this world? right? And that's you. You are the sparks of God that is walking through this world. And we're really learning to create the new earth in a grounded way. That's not this wishy-washy new age thought delusion. What is a thought delusion? Is when we think something and we believe it's real, but it's actually not in reality. And so I know this is a harsh word, but they always like for me to use harsh words because it really pierces through the amnesia, right? It's like, oh, hey, you know, still a little bit of sleep. Doink. Um, let's use some harsh words. Just pierce through the amnesia. Just whack that new age glass ceiling in the head there. <laughs> it's uh, so much love. So much love. It's because we're just, you know, we love you all so much. We want to see you blossom, living your mission, not in misery right? Feeling delight and joy through all layers of your body. That's what is organic for being a human. Okay. And so what is the wishy-washy new age delusion is when we're sitting around in our house, we're still going to our new age, false matrix job, we're watching Netflix, we're eating junk food, and then we're like, oh, look, the galactic's the Galactic Federation said that the new earth is here. <laughs> We're like, yay, the new earth is here. And like eating chips and, you know, drinking beer and watching Netflix. That is delusional. No offense. <laughs> it's okay if that's what we fell for because it's not your fault. I mean, the CIA literally designed those programs for us to be dormant and for us to be in the new age thought delusion. Now, it's not even that fun. It's not. You're not fulfilled. What do you want? You want to wake up and feel the ascended mastery that you are. You want to feel like you're participating in God's plan because that's what you're meant to do. You want to feel like you wake up in the morning and you're just motivated by love. It's not like, oh, okay, I got to go meditate. Ugh right? It's like another day to be an embodiment of divine love. Holy crap. I'm just, I won the lottery of life, right? We don't want to sit around and wait for the Galactic Federation to do their thing. We are the Galactics, right? We are the best of the Galactics. 
we're the best of the Galactics because we got sent down here where things are intense and our teams had to send the best down to the earth, right? And so what do you really, really want? You want to wake up feeling like the embodied master that you are. You want to wake up feeling like you're going to start another day where you're making a difference on this planet in massive ways, right? You're, you're making massive abundance in alignment with your love, with your soul, where you're offering in abundance and receiving. It's like a field of overabundance. And so then you're taking that energy and you're creating the new world and you're on that. Your body's in it, right? And so this is true source embodiment. We want, that's what we need. We're blasting out of the wishy-washy new age thought delusion. <laughs> And that feels so good, right? For you to feel the fulfillment of access of your mastery, remembering, you know, those times, you know, in the temples, we didn't wake up at 5 a.m. being like, oh, I wish I could stay in bed. I can't, you know, we were like, oh, right? Another day to pray and be in union with God. It's beautiful. It's angelic nerdiness. <laughs> And I give, I hope that my, I, by giving myself permission to be in complete openness with that and angel nerdiness gives you permission to do the same because together we're strong and where there is God, there is no fear. And so, um, I hope that you guys come to the Pleiades gateway because it's going to be so beautiful. I'm going to break down the curriculum next week and then facilitate a healing the week after. Um, I thought about running the J Seals removal publicly on my YouTube channel and I just did not feel comfortable with that. The reason for that is because I'm literally going to be doing surgery now. Would you um, do surgery in a shopping mall where it's a very public place? No, right? In order for it to be a very contained sacred space, we're doing two whole days of preparation before we're actually going in to do that level of light body clearing. And so that's why I can't just, I don't feel comfortable like as a responsible shaman to just, you know, I can't, it's like I can't just mail you ayahuasca and be like, all right, just watch this YouTube video. It's not like that, right? There are certain things. I mean, I'm pretty progressive. And I'm, I'm pretty trusting of you guys. I give you guys a lot of information to do these deep, deep works on my YouTube. But there are certain things that need to be contained. And there are certain things that need to be held. And there's a reason why the Galactics are creating this whole two days of preparation before we do that clearing. And then we're going to do a ceremony the next day as well to bring in these higher soul aspects. And it's just not something you want to be doing publicly. It needs to be a held space. And so this is an incredible opportunity. I'm super excited to share it with you guys. And on that note, I'm going to... Um, <laughs> yeah, I like this. I don't know. They Sometimes when I'm writing you guys emails and stuff, like even the description, like it's really the team and I writing together. And sometimes they use words that like surprise me. For example, this week the word was dignified. And I never really used that word before, but it came in in such a strong way, right? It says... There is profoundness of God's love. And the profoundness of God's love moved through us. The depth and devotion that's required to be fully on our mission is immense, right? And this is really the gates of initiation where finally there's something worthwhile to devote your time and energy for. Not because somebody else is telling you to, not because you think if you don't, you're going to die, but because you truly want to from the depth of your soul. And these are the bridges that are being built for you to arrive on earth, a dignified angel. And I just felt so touched by this word dignified. And because I think that it's talking about this next phase of our life, right? Where we're, we're not pummeled 
by the pain. We're not afraid of the demons. We're not being controlled, right? We're completely sovereign and this moves us into that vibration of dignity. And this is the vibration that we're pulling humanity and there's a lot of compassion in that, right? Because it speaks to the ways that we have been abused. The way that that very human sense of dignity had been taken away from us as a soul level level of shame and embarrassment and abuse right 222 people live yo what up <laughs> seen that 222 2022 is gonna be lit 2022 is a master year okay it's gonna be incredible and that's why this it's like this is this is the energy that's coming in for the year 2022 when we step into our mastery it's just incredible. And so anyway, <laughs> the whole dignified thing speaks to this compassion that we have. Because when we realize how abusive the system has been to humanity and how this has created shame and embarrassment and taken the most profound and beautiful things away from them and indignified them, we're here to bring that deep sense of soul level dignity back. And that feels really profound and good. Ooh. And so on that note, I'm going to sing some songs. And somebody's asking about clearing videos. I have a whole playlist. If you go on my YouTube channel and scroll to the bottom, there's a playlist called Oracle medicine ceremonies and there's you know tens of clearing ceremonies in there for all sorts of stuff so you can just go in there and find one that you like and on that note i'm gonna sing you guys uh, a song and um ah i feel so good i'll see you guys next week so let's do it
Thank you so much for tuning in live. And if this is your first live stream with us here, the Earth Star Sanctuary, I am Z, Earth Star Healer. Welcome back to the mothership. We're so excited to be here on Earth with all of you to fulfill God's plan, the potential and the fulfillment of this planet of humanity, of the universe. We do it in joy, we do it in togetherness, and we're so excited to continue on in this life with all of you. So on that note, we'll see you next week. Sending so much love out there to you and bye for now.